Hi, my name is David Matzik. I'm a PhD student in archaeology at Aarhus University in Denmark, and I uh, welcome you to my talk about our application of geometric morphometrics and cultural phylogenetics to reassess traditional archaeological typologies. Um, the robust identification of material culture variability remains an important goal in Paleolithic archaeology, given that such variability is then coupled to interpretations of culture change, demography and adaptation. Most commonly, material culture variability, as seen in tool forms and assemblage structure, is agglomerated into higher order units labeled cultures, techno complexes, groups, faces or the like. In the final Paleolithic of Europe and the Paleo-Indian period of North America, most such archaeological cultures are defined on the basis of artifact typology, most commonly concerning projectile points. Um, but recent applications of computer-aided methods such as geometric morphometrics and phylogenetics have raised doubts as to the validity of many such entrenched groupings. I present to you today the preliminary results of a comparative exploration conducted wholly in the programming language R, where we recreated several landmark-based GMM studies using outline data to assess the appropriateness of the outline-based approach. We tested the ability of outline data to cluster artifacts into meaningful groups based on the shape alone, and we checked whether outline data is appropriate to detect processes of cultural evolution. And in the last part of this talk, we are going to take a look at the results of these methods applied to a data set of the European late Upper Paleolithic tank points. Um, I'm going to start with the comparison of landmark and outline based analyses for which we used the Paleo-Indian data set. And we decided to use two dimensional outline shapes as the basic data um, as opposed to the majority of studies so far, which used landmark-based data, since the procurement of outline data can be automized and is uh, this therefore much faster and less um, ambiguous than collecting landmarks, um, as the amount of manual preparation is minimized and the choice of homologous points is uh, omitted, for example. Um, the analysis of large data sets can only be done using outline data um, for the reasons I just named, in our opinion. And we therefore need to test whether outline data can lead to meaningful results. <clears throat> one of the case studies we chose is the one of um, Buchanan et Ali from 2020, who took on the long debated and still unresolved relationship between the late Paleo-Indian project, uh, projectile points um, from the central United States, um, the Goshen and Plainview type, and due to an ambiguous chronology and typological similarity, it's not clear whether these two groups should be kept separate or whether they should be consolidated into one. And by applying landmark-based geometric morphometrics and statistical testing on a sample of Goshen and Plainview type points, their results indicate that the two groups cannot be separated and they suggest the Goshen type um, to be incorporated into the Plainview group. And we wanted to test whether we were able to reproduce their results, meaning the two groups are indistinguishable from one another, but now using the outline shape of the same specimen. And therefore we extracted the outlines from pictures of the same specimen as they used, using edge detection, and subdued them to elliptical Fourier analyses to describe their shape. Um, to reduce the dimensionality, we fed those data into a principal components analysis and in this case used the first six PC scores to describe 95% of the total shape variation for our further multivariate analysis. And this workflow was the same for the other case studies presented here in this talk as well. Um, on first sight, um, on the scatter plot of the first principal um, component scores, it becomes apparent that the two, uh, that the specimen of the two types um, overlap to a very large extent. But just to be sure, we conducted a permutational MANOVA on the first six PC scores, um, and which led to a non-significant result as well, um, indicating that the two means of all groups are the same. 
And just to be sure, we um, further calculated the measure of relative shape distance as proposed by Klingenberg and Monteiro in 2005, which also led to the result that both groups cannot be distinguished from one another. In the second part, I show how outline data in combination with phylogenetic methods are capable of recreating traditional archaeological typochronologies. And therefore, we use the outline shape processed in the same way as described before um, of 738 European Bronze Age arrowheads from the bell beaker culture in France, the UK and Denmark, um, which were compiled in the catalog of Clément Nicolas dissertation. Um, the scatter plot of the first two PC scores already shows a clear distinction between the artifacts from different countries um, with a certain overlap between the ones from France and the UK, which can be expected because of their geographical closeness. And furthermore, we were able to cluster the artifacts into meaningful and homogeneous groups using hierarchical clustering. However, the most interesting uh, results from this data set was the reconstruction of um, Nicolas' uh, typochronology using our only um, the outline data of the arrowheads and we applied the so-called neighbor joining algorithm to the data, which is a method in bioinformatics to create phylogenetic trees from continuous data. And um, the algorithm allows for individual substitution rates for each individual artifact, meaning in this case that the further the tips lie away from the tree's root, the more steps of, so to say, evolution the artifact had to go through and uh, therefore the x-axis on this plot can be interpreted interpreted to represent time. And um, I highlighted the types uh, from uh, Nicolas uh, in his type of chronology to the right um, in the corresponding artifacts in the phylogenetic tree to the left in the same colors um, to better compare the sequential steps And uh, yeah, it becomes apparent that uh, clear transmission patterns exist in the stone tools and um, that outline data in combination with phylogenetic methods can capture them. And um, now that we've shown that num numerical taxonomic and uh, phylogenetic methods lead to meaningful results when applied to outline based data, we turn to the tank points of the European late upper paleolithic and the tank points of the late European Upper Paleolithic um, are split into many differently labeled groups, um, some of which are marked on the map uh, inside of those clear cut borders, who are, in our opinion, mainly the biased result of local research histories uh, and a lack of communication, and therefore leading to sometimes obscure and very local types that are defined on the basis of perhaps only a single site. And we tested whether those subjective groupings hold true to more objective, geometric, morphometric based classification. Um, here we see a set of tank points derived from the article by Ried and colleagues uh, with their respective designations to which we refer to as named archaeological taxons or NATs. Uh, NAT is meant um, as an object focused pendant to what uh, John Shea labeled nasties or named stone tool industries. On first sight, it already becomes apparent that the different NATs are very heterogeneous uh, in themselves um, and some are defined on a very small sample. And uh, we split the data into 18 clusters using the UPGMA hierarchical clustering algorithm. And in the boxes to the right are the members of each so created cluster colored in the shade of the previously assigned NAT and it becomes apparent that the NATs do not match the outline based GMM results. Um, the clustering results um, indicate that the NATs of the literature operate in different levels of distinction even though they're not supposed to. So, um, yeah, if you would follow the 
the traditional definitions, for example, those Lingvi points, the green ones and the Bromme points, the red ones, appear in every cluster, whereas they should be separate from one another. Um, if the definition of the NATs were true. And based on this, um, the points either have to be summarized under one, all containing name, and or split um, into many smaller clusters under new names. <clears throat> um, we also subdued the data to the neighbor joining algorithm. However, it uh, didn't result in a sequence as could be expected from the literature, which raised many questions mainly to our data sets, uh, which we have yet to answer. But uh, in conclusion, we found that outline-based GMM methods come to the same results as landmark-based ones while making data collection easier and faster. And um, it's, now it's even possible to capture patterns of cultural transmission if the data is appropriate. We therefore now have a workflow that allows us in the future to investigate the data within the toolbox of the comparative method sensumes colleagues to understand, uh, understand human environment interaction. However, um, regarding the data, our results indicate that the analysis and interpretation of final paralytic tank points is more complicated and multidimensional than in the case of the here reanalyzed Bronze Age arrowheads. And we suggest that the reasons can at least partly be found in deviating tool designs, underlying production techniques, and the differential status of the respective groups of object, objects in uh, past human societies. As for example, the bell beaker arrowheads are completely reworked um, across both surfaces whereas the tank points um, show only partial retouches and are mostly defined by their initial flake shape um, yeah thank you for attending this talk <laughs>